start with that out here. I'm gonna load up a base body. Earlier stream, way earlier stream. Speaking of, up some internet here. All right, uh, YouTube, Art Station, and that stream. So if I go way back in time, so uh, basically you can go here to my playlists, created playlists, and there should be what we're doing right now, which is live stream full episodes view full playlist if you go way back in time here to like episode one um we watched or we we were doing a kind of a base body dude i'm just gonna re re get him if i can find him give me a second um like mail at the very bottom uh proportion shift but I think what we can do is we can just borrow a little bit of his anatomy. So I'm going to Alt-Tab him, Shift-Click. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steal his upper body. And he's already been remeshed. So if I go in here to Geometry, of Madness and Illusion Level 1, you can see we have some geometry to work with. But I basically want to take his upper body geometry, but keep his subdivision history and keep his... Hold on, Skin Shooter 4 here. Um, Keep the rest of the geometry. So I'm going to go to division level one, control shift, and let's use select lasso. We can go through here, basically, like right along here. I'm going to go ahead and so select lasso. If you select an edge, I'll go ahead and do an edge ring. If I do this, I can go in here to like maybe auto groups. And I don't want to do that. Um, I'll just use, I'll just be very careful now. So I'll take the rest of these polygons out. Kind of weird. Check these out and then adds back. Okay. All right, ZBrush. Want to play those games? Brute force it. So, uh, Control Shift Alt. And you know what? See this. Control Shift X to expand. I'll just go through here manually and just grab what I need. Not quite sure what I'll need necessarily. Should work. Okay. So something like this. And we still have subdivision history here. So if I go up here to subdivision level four, you see we still have uh, detail-ish. It's not like I need all this detail necessarily, but it's a good starting point. So we're going to say uh, control click to mask, delete lower, and then geometry modified topology. That's going on my tombstone, remember? We're going to do delete hidden. And then we can um, control drag to unmask, and then reconstruct back down. Um, version level one. Now, I don't like working with open meshes, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to um, free subdivision levels. I'm going to do it. We're going to cap this. Let's see if we can't use Z modeler and say close convex hole here. Yeah, that'll work fine. Yeah, I'll make that its own poly group. And then I'm going to unfree subdivision levels. And then put me back where we started. Drag. And then now we have still our first subdivision levels and still have the ability to kind of go through you know, these edges a little bit. That'll be the start of our genie, which is today's. Sculptober uh, thing, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. Um, <laughs> hey everybody. Um, yeah, sometimes uh, when you use select lasso, I mean, honestly, when I use select lasso and I accidentally click an edge loop, that's usually when I notice that I have select lasso turned on. But, you know, sometimes it works all the way around, sometimes not. You can also use the modeler and stuff, but it's also a neat. Uh, thing you can use. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to, I think he's going to be fairly, he's going to be mostly like this. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to change him too much. Um, 
I'm wondering if uh, he's he's in a very relaxed pose right now, so I might want to put him in more of a a bodybuilder reference here. Put him in more of a you know chest back head head kind of back pose here. So over here kind of fix him a little bit so I'm gonna drop down to such a level one I'm gonna make him big changes here I'm gonna make him a little bit more aloof and I can say I mask his head up and then control tap here I'm gonna tilt his head back just a bit now we are we can at some point you know go through here and pose him so we'll turn off X symmetry and we'll uh, pose him as he needs to be seen uh, in our in our scene or whatever we end up doing but for now I'm just gonna kind of hit him a little closer to the attitude we're going for. And then uh, these arms I'm going to raise up a little bit. So we're going to kind of go back in X symmetry here. I'm not going to do a real extreme pose, but I guess we could if we wanted to. Here. And... arms back which is fine and then uh, we'll probably close those hands up and we'll drop his arms down but when I go through there and get this chest up a little bit We'll really kind of pull down control and drag along here. So I can... but we're going to give him a little bit more flat room here. If I'm constantly having to go back through here and like re-grab his arms here, we can just hit Control W to make those our own polygroup. So now I can hit W, Control Tap, and uh, Control Tap a little bit more so I can go through and up a little bit here. change these proportions a little bit. Wait. More forearm here. Let's change around. Let's hold down shift and drop that Z intensity down just a little bit. I have smooth stronger turned on by default. Um, that's probably why. Go ahead and give him and a little bit more of that left out just here. Flats and then this up just a head. Let's see that pronounced. We can also use free subdivision levels to our advantage if we want to go through and you know do anything crazy with them and still maintain our topology. No, we don't have to, but that might be something we do. Kind of a ink and button. Just a bit. Leaks coming down this way. Oh, and there's serratus anterior. Also, um, that comes in a little low. Also, want to still flare those uh, traps out like it's actually holding his arms up. You know, walk around the gym like that. Everybody thinks you're big. Flare those lats.
you would want to take his whole upper body here. Again, control tap, just kind of blur that out a little bit. A bit. A clay brush, and we'll just make that rib cage kind of pop. Here, get that nice arc. Here. Move back you. Just an ominous here. Got this top one. And as we go through, you're going to see, you know, some of this, this, this the details from the original are going to kind of pop back a little bit. That's quite all right. Uh, we're basically just going to go through here, maybe use our Damien standard and I go through a little bit and got our belly button here. And most of the reference I'm seeing abs, uh, that kind of a look. And they're not super duper pronounced, at least not when the, you know, this is kind of up and stretched. So we'll go ahead and leave that. Crank up our intensity on our Z brush a little bit, or our standard brush. Crank up the lazy radius and tap L to turn that off. You can just kind of use and dig in a little bit. So for very sharp things, I'll use Damien standard to kind of dig in a little bit. And then for a little bit broader fall off, I'll use my standard brush here. So Damien standard or standard brush to dig in and then clay brush to kind of go back in. We'll go down the middle here and dig. A pinch brush to kind of that that a little bit, and then again use our clay brush here. There we go. So now we've got a very stoic uh, start to our genie. Now let's switch around to the back here, or the wait. Uh, I'm using Anatomy 360 as kind of a quick ref guide here just to kind of stay honest with my superficial landmarks because I you know I'll have my you know anatomy what's it called the ecorche model with the muscles and stuff but that can be very misleading sometimes but uh, especially when you start adding skin and fat and also the fact that some muscles underneath like the the lats are actually pretty thin and then those get overtaken quite a bit by like the serratus anterior underneath so again, it can be a little bit misleading when you're looking just at the muscles. Not getting those uh, superficial details. So I'm using an actual scan model of a bodybuilder in generally this pose. Now let's go ahead. A little bit broader here. And You've got your infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major, teres minor, and then your deltoid back here. So the deltoid looks like it a little bit. Very nice. Pop. One in the back. And then these, the lat, <clears throat> actually sits pretty thin. The rest of those back muscles here. And again, we're at Sudivision level two. Um, Sudivision, or Sudivision level three. Sudivision level two is probably good for just your volumes. And then three uh, gets a little bit more detailed. And again, if you want to see the making of this, I uh, go way back uh, in my playlist there, or even on the Pavlovich workshop, if you go all the way back, my ZBrush channel, <clears throat> or the channel I stream on for ZBrush. And you can see uh, we did a you know, kind of a female version block out way, way back in the day. So go through here, clay brush. Uh, this looks a little bit more here. And let's go set it to for building up a volume here that was incorrect. Eating good. I also have a very pronounced horseshoe on the back. This reference, a little bit more of a cylinder. It's not super pronounced. 
which again, you know, you can use artistic license and do whatever you want, but eight back here, let's go three. And this geometry isn't great. I think it's just basically a, a quick Z remesh. So there might be some weird issues. We can clean that up later as well uh, and reproject our detail back. But I'm not overly concerned since I don't plan on shooting none of this back. And I can probably fudge that uh, just with brute force high res. Create this down a little bit more. That little Christmas tree back here. Spinal erectors along here. Let's go ahead and pinch this. Add again. Um, also, clay buildup. I want to go into a clay buildup and maybe drop the intensity down. And maybe even go in here to stroke modifiers, roll distance. To kind of smooth that down a little bit. Kind of build up uh, muscles. Stay along here. Actually, get some pretty good. And back here. Uh, he's got a high butt. Let's go ahead and knock that back a bit here. We'll just take that intensity down on our smooth brush. So we want to smooth out our volumes, we just want to smooth out kind of our brush strokes a little bit. So again, going between clay buildup and clay brush, and, and Damien standard and standard brush. Nothing really crazy or anything. Again, a really nice pop that scapula down here. Bring our volumes right. A while since I've done some organic sculpting here. Here, here, here. And again, yeah, that very thin lat comes across everything. Then to traps. Just a hint of that. Go on here and build up that. L7, a little bit beefier. Okay, something like this. Go ahead and start. Remember the hotkeys. Okay, I uh, get caught up. Comment. Cool. Ooh, Blender question is my favorite. Um, use whatever you want. Everything's cool, man. Uh, currently make some arm for my character. We use a ZBrush Dynamesh Clip or Blender Poly modeling to approach it. How low poly count should I go for baking? Um, kind of depends on doing a, a model for a fighting game where you can have 300,000 polygons. Are you doing it for a top quarter down RPG or MMO, we have a little bit more budgetary concerns. Uh, and also how close does your camera get to the model? Is it cinematic, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that go into how many polys should your model be for your low res that you're gonna bake to. Anywhere between, let's say a thousand and 500,000. Um, Uh, 
Blender for hard surface modeling, learn Blender for the sake of hard surface modeling, get the Blender, I want better tools for hard surface modeling, or ZBrush model for hard surface modeling. Uh, all of the above, why limit yourself? Disable the spacebar pop-up menu, anyone help me for this? This one, I don't know. Like this, I think that's always, I think that might be a little bit hard-coded, so we may have a better response to that. Um, and yeah, Ecrochet is great for learning like the origins and insertions and why, you know, the muscles do what they do underneath. Um, but man, the, I find that I'm not as, I don't know, the, the, the final result or getting a realistic result. Uh, but that Ecrochet is a little bit tougher when you don't have that complemented or supplemented with surface anatomy because boy, it, it makes all the difference especially on different body types. Uh, okay, so I think we're far enough along with this uh, genie guy. Uh, actually, let's go through here and let's make changes. We got this big strap here for the neck. I kind of round out a little bit too. So we go in here, actually we use our clay buildup, go across the form. We just wanna kind of make this a bit rounder. As it goes down, then we'll use our Damien standard just to kind of take that cylinder. We've got that two heads at the bottom here. A little bit more separation here. Then this, let's go ahead and drop our bone so it's a little bit flatter. And there's not a whole bunch of like peck separation or striation uh, on this particular body type. It's not like super grusely or anything, but I mean, of course you can always do what you want. Add a little bit towards the bottom of the sternum there and back around through here. Actually, my reference is kind of blown out a little bit. I Keep the color on. Just make. black and white. This is down and then clay brush. Hold up a little bit more. Muddy in here. All right, so next, save this so far, new folder. And we already have a texture imported. So texture import, and I have this uh, already in Spotlight actually. Correctly. There we go. So uh, this is actually, oh, I'm going to have this up. Kinda, I like this kind of shape, flat, a little bit simpler. Uh, but you can kind of see a little better what's going on. There's some really ornate ones, uh, by the way. There's some really kind of a little bit less ornate. Here's a little bit more ornate. Um, I'm not going for ornate or anything like that necessarily, but at least this will give us our proportions and our volumes. We'll work go through here. We can say, let's just start with a simple cylinder here. Poly, uh, make poly mesh 3D. And uh, yeah, this resolution is probably fine. Go ahead and well, let's do this to a down. 
And the things that aren't going to change that much are probably going to be this cylinder on the top here. Go ahead and shrink this down. And this has multiple lines on it. I can go through and use a deformer, or I can just go through here and say geometry edge loop, delete loops. Kind of get rid of those extraneous ones, and I can just go through here, and mask that top, go to unmatch mesh center, and we kind of bring this in a little bit. We've got our base somewhere in here. And if I want this to curve in a little bit, we can go through here. We can say insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and we pull in, add a little bit of a slope here. And then for that top part, we can just steal this geometry. So I'm going to say duplicate that off, go into solo mode, pull down control shift, and we'll just grab this top cap, say delete hidden. And then we can, if we want to see it, we can go through here and we can add a little bit of. Um, turn on dynamic and then add a little thickness here so we can see where that piece is. There we go. So now uh, we have this piece here. We have dynamic thickness turned on. Uh, I don't really need dynamic thickness. I was just showing you where that was. Uh, so we can go ahead and apply that dynamic thickness. And then let's go back to mask pin so we can just mask this top part here. W. And then that'll give us that radius there. So this kind of, um, see it, tell if it kind of, if this is part of the lid that bulbs out or, yeah, we'll, we'll make a part of the lid, why not? So uh, this will be part of the lid that kind of bulges out and then the rest of this is gonna be a tapered dome here. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we can say again, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, and we can make this Pull out as much as we'd like, um, you know. And as we do that, we can also pull up or down and kind of round this out. And we can go ahead and let's scale this, this bit here. And then for the dome part, uh, that kind of comes in a little bit. So let's do a quick inset polygroup island. Kind of give us a little bit of breathing room there. And then we're just going to say delete polygroup island. And we can say close convex hole. And just kind of close this off and then we can make it uh you know whatever resolution you'd like isolate this let's do a quick auto groups we have access to this polygroup here and we'll hold down a full shift mask it invert that mask and we'll put it here at the base back to our reference here and oops i didn't save my camera angle A little less pronounced. We're in there. And then right out the top of this thing, like a peg. And it seems to be, is it built in? That kind of looks built in. We'll go ahead and say, we'll shift. We'll grab this top poly group here, hit control W, W, uh, control tap here, and reset this. And we can just control tap to pull that out. And it actually does look a little bit rounded some of that reference, so I'll go ahead and leave that. Um, it has another little bump in here, so we'll say insert single edge loop. Here, and then again, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, it'll just pull out. Bump there. Now let's make that a little bit more pronounced. This one, if you go to interactive elevation, or you go to unmatched mesh center, and then as you start scaling out, hold down Alt, and it'll scale along that axis. You're gonna wanna mask um, the rest of the uh, stuff you don't need. I think that'll work for now. Now let's give ourselves a little bit more uh, breathing room down here. So we'll say poly group, or say, uh, no, Q mesh, poly group island. Pull this down a little bit. And then we'll go through here and pull this up. I think that looks about what I'm seeing, at least I'm seeing here. Um, go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and round this out. Something like that. 
forgetting to save my damn um, camera view. Go ahead and do that. So this is generally where things are at right now. I'm gonna go up here to uh, movie timeline show. Go ahead and tap here to save that camera view. So now when I move around, I can use my arrow keys to tap that back. Um, let me see, is this one gonna be difficult? This one may be a little bit more Z Rameshi. See how that goes. So let's go ahead and append a sphere. We'll start with a sphere. And again, I'm just going for general volumes here. And so this is actually going to be a little wider. Let's go in here. Not transparency here. Do that again. Append here. I've got a little off axis here. Well, Sam goes transparency so low. Here to position row and two and zero. Now, uh, again, we're just going for volumes here. So, generally going to be this. Always clip back what we need or what we don't need. And then from the top here, um, looking at one and this one, it flares out quite a bit. So, go ahead and that flare. It. And again, turn on transparency. Now we can go through here, hold down control shift, and we'll just clip this top back here so we can kind of get a better idea. How much past this should go. And it looks fairly busly past. Okay. Um, just to kind of. May, we may go in there pretty boldly. Looking at my reference here, we may go in here and just kind of pull these shapes here. Let's hit W, move multiple, let's just grab top ones here. Just a bit. Uh, let me get Too kind. Cool. Um, uh, tips for poly painting skin details. Not really. I have, um, I think the last thing with skin details I did was, oh boy. Way back here, I think it was mostly done in Substance Painter, though. Um, kind of depends on what details you're, you're looking for. Um, Magda has some better painting skin detail stuff. Here. Oh. Cool. Uh, you determine the polygon budgets for a mesh that will be used in a game. Uh, it depends on the game type. Yeah, and it's going to be somewhere between a thousand and five hundred thousand. <laughs> yes, geometry modified topology. Oh, I had a nickel for every time I had to say that. Okay, so we've got the front, we've got the back here. Boy, this is a kind of a nightmare shape, isn't it? <laughs> Very uh, hard surface organic. -y. So you know what? Let's just get it done. So let's go through here, let's mask this out. I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna kind of take this along here. We can maybe use like a snake hook uh, so we can even turn on um, Ultras Pro and maybe BS, -A -S -H. S 
look over here, snake hook, PSH. Uh, go through here and kind of just pull along um, this and kind of get that shape going. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, again, I don't mind that bowl shape here, but we'll go ahead and get this little spout, little teapot spout. So I can hold down control and I can pull an edge loop or an edge ring along here. And then as I go, I can kind of shrink this down. I can also add a piece of geometry here. It might be a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to go through here and let's just add a cube. So we'll append cube. I'm going to take this cube, move it to the front here. We're just going to, oh, we can actually flip shape and then round out that bottom, huh? Let's try that. So again, I'm just looking for that general shape here. It's going to be, it's going to be kind of a tapered shape. So let's hit W. Let's go in here for deformer menu. We're going to say X symmetry and on control alt, I'm going to pull this in and control alt. And I get that overall shape here. And then we'll go immediately in here to Dynamesh. So then we'll go through here and we'll say clip. We'll say it's gonna give us that kind of front shape here. And our geo doesn't match up perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna kinda Up a little bit here. Here and weld, turn on axometry. Yeah, kind of fudge this a little bit. Now on the bottom here is going to, it looks like this tapers a little bit more. And actually we can just go through here with our move brush. We don't gotta get super fancy. And we'll use a boolean for that. And then on the bottom here, let's read Dynamesh and we'll just use our trim dynamic. And you know what, let's turn off. So let's kind of round out this bottom here. Also looks like from the top, getting a little bit more of this kind of shape. So generally what we have here, give or take, and then we're going to have a spout or kind of a little um, tension that goes in here. Now again, we might re continue to refine this before we are just booleaning that off. Okay, so we've got a handle here, and this one, I think we can just go through here. Let's do this. Do they append? anything take this and go down here to initialize and say give us a q cube for this right here and we can just bridge things around to kind of fill this in a little bit and Something like that. Okay, and then go through here and we'll just modify just a few of these points here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect and we can go through and may end up, you know, zero meshing their final result anyway, because I don't know how 
even these transitions are going to be. Um, but just as needed, you can go through here. Let's go ahead and, in fact, um, set here to unmatch mesh center. Pull this in. So now, I can go through here and we can say delete uh, flat island, I guess. I guess you can probably delete polygroup all if you wanted to. It might be a little bit faster. So delete polygroup all. Boop, get rid of all those. And then we can just go through here and bridge uh, two holes here. And let's go ahead and cap close. In fact, we don't even need these ones here. So let's go into insert, single edge loop, get rid of this one, get rid of that one. Make this a little bit easier. Close or bridge edges here. Oops, that's why. Insert single edge loop, get rid of this one. This one. Control W. Now close convex hole. Ugh. Bridge edges here. Now I'm gonna kind of smooth these out. Uh, let's go through here and do see if we can't do a, a group by normals, get a poly group on all those. We can do a quick mirror and weld, and then I'm gonna do a quick polish by features. Uh, close circle so we can maintain our volume and that kind of smooth out these transitions just a bit. In fact, let's try this. Let's go in here to zero mesh, half that size down to zero, keep groups, smooth groups down, just to kind of even our geometry back out. And then now we can go through here, have symmetry turned on, mirror and weld. I massage these into place a little bit. And actually on this one here, kind of goes around and then up. I like. Take this here, insert single edge loop, and then alt mark, do mesh. Probably fine. Just pop this up. And if I want to change it back to something a little bit more like this, where the, the width is even all the way around, certainly do that. Um, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, so we've got that pretty much out here. I just need to do the base. And the base, I'm going to go ahead and steal a little bit of geometry, I think. About the right size. So. I'll go ahead and duplicate this off, move it down, go into, no, I'm going to keep that straight down for now. Maybe I'll scale it out just a bit. Now, uh, this top piece here, I don't need, in fact, we can just do this. Shift X to expand, drag. Let's go ahead and switch back to select rectangle, delete hidden. Um, in fact, the heck? No, what we can do, we just take this one, say delete hidden, and then U mesh polygroup island, polygroup all, pull this down. Start with this as a cylinder here. Um, in fact, put this forward. Okay, so we've got this, and we're just going to go ahead and finish this out. So we might bridge to get that nice slope, and then we'll put that point in the very end, maybe. So let's go ahead and say this here.
hold on control and drag out a copy of this. And this one scaled right in the middle here. Our base. We'll just scale this up. Like our math here. God. Eh, kind of depends on the reference. Kind of depends on which one you're looking at. Okay, so we'll go ahead and scale this down. So we're going to bridge those to kind of get that fall off, and then we're going to pull to a point. Does that seem right? That might work. That might just work. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and again say delete. Island here, here. Bridge two holes. Interactive curvature, interactive resolution here. Connect symmetry. If we want to be careful with that, carefuler, is that a word? Over here to, where is that? Transform? No. Broke? Depth. Infinite depth in the Y direction. So when I'm down here, pull out top along with me. So it's a little tad wide. And you know what? I do like this curve. But I wonder if the handle is a little too cartoony. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep what I want, which is all this. In fact, it might just be easy to just go in here to group by normals. I'm going to take this poly group and this one. Delete hidden. Cube mesh. Poly group. All. All polygons, I should say. Pull this back. I'll go in here to flip, display properties, flip. In fact, it might behoove us to pull out, hold down shift. Um, pull W, make that all one poly group, and then now you can pull, pull down shift, pull along that surface normal maybe, Ugh, that inflates it a bit. All. This side, not so bad. This side, here's what we can do. Insert single edge loops, get rid of that middle one here. Kind of helps a little bit. I can just go through here and just grab these problematic words through here. You can say crease polygroup, or I just run a crease tolerance, crease level of two, instead of three. E. Start up what we'll need. And this really, I'm looking at this now. Let's do shifty. I'm gonna alt paint here. Play Q mesh. 
Screw mesh, polygroup ball, and we'll see if we can just right on through. Slide this down. Add you go back out. And if you wanted to, um, you can still go through here and flare out these bases. You know, just go through here and kind of stabilize this base a little bit more. All right, something like that. Let me get cut. Mm. Block you. Okay, that was easy. Um. All right. Um, well, can you tell me the best path to learn character modeling? Uh, man, tough questions this morning. Uh, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I uh, model stuff. That's a tough one. Um, I mean, if you, if you want to have a on my R station page here where it's like how to get your foot in the door do i need a college degree 3d 2d pipelines and all that stuff you can listen to me wax poetic about stuff if you'd like i get really high details and characters using alphas like on the skin where can we find these alphas uh skin alphas try texture xyz regarding to polyplex question what do you think about hd geometry um if i'm doing anything that high on the model, I probably would put that in. If it's not going to break the silhouette, I'm probably going to put in the texture. Um, and But I mean, if you need to 3D print it, ooh, but if you're using HD geometry on a 3D printer, I hope you're printing it like six feet by six feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, my, my Simpsons references that uh, the oldest millennials will get at this point. Cool. Is there a different way to unify the size of different import subtools while keeping the scale the same without the head being double the size of the clothes? Uh, I mean, if you're if you're bringing in something that's arbitrary scale, no, um, because it's just an arbitrary scale. It sounds like. Um, I mean, I do have a video on that on the basics here, so we'll go to. Um. 2020 ideation scale um, number 38 ZBrush scale. Check how you can copy an entire folder. However, if you go into the comma key, so that kind of that this kind of explains like when you bring in a model for a marvelous designer or something that has a millimeter scale versus a kilometer scale, um, how it's going to be off and how ZBrush treats that with the size and stuff like that. Um, X Y. But again, if it's arbitrary scales, like you're bringing in a scale from millimeter and then it's bringing the scale as inches and having it automatically do that no i don't know that there's an automatic solution you can go in here to z plugin scale master and then um you might be able to figure out like oh yeah this one's feet this one's inches this one's centimeters this one's millimeters and you can unify them that way uh if you do know the scale that was brought in at but as far as like an automatic make my make the head relative to the body um, that would require some pretty heavy AI and machine learning, I think, if I understand the question correctly, because uh, a 3D program doesn't understand that what you imported was a head or was a shoe. It just goes, these are vert positions in space. I don't know what this is. This is the unit scale that the uh, file format gave me. This is how ZBrush is interpreting it. So, um, I mean, yeah, you could um, write a machine learning or AI script that will look at the object with computer eyeballs. And then um, I'll actually pull down alt, another quick mirror and All, and like, there you go. Uh, and then it can actually look at your 3D model and go, oh, I know what this is. This appears to be a cat. 
cats are generally this big compared to a human, which you imported later, I'm going to automatically scale it down to be cat sized. Um, and then if you could do that, um, you can make a SIGGRAPH white paper. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, uh, I blocked the user a lot of them. There was like nine in a row of different names. I, had, I went through and blocked them. Hopefully I went through a restream. Um, I mean, 3D model use 3D modeling. It's working fine, but a slow process is in Boolean. But the thing I'm creating is a mix of hard surface and curved surface. What do you normally do for harder items like this? Kind of like what we're doing here. Um, stay tuned. Cut out some mesh. Stylized hair. Try to do cut out so it's masking. That's our closing fully. Uh, hair. Um, not sure if I understand your approach, but you can check out here. Here's some stylized hair tips. Not sure about the cutout part. Yeah, I guess I'd have to see. I'm not really following the process there. Okay, so this is getting into our lamp. Now this this here is probably gonna be fine. So we can go through here and just start doing our usual, like, okay, crease tolerance, dynamic, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And then I'll give us our kind of dynamic look that seems to be in line with what I'm looking for. Actually, what we may need to do is go through here. I'm actually gonna say crease, edge loop complete here and here, then uncrease these. That would be a little bit more in line with what I was looking for. And then even here, we can go through and this. So, so we don't get that scalloping on the edge. We're just going to go to insert single edge loop. We'll just kind of hold that edge a little bit more. Be OK. And then this one here, uh, same deal. Let's go uncrease all and then crease dynamic. Crease Dynamic has thickness on it. Um, crease level two, Musa to three. I was expecting. However, I want to go ahead and increase here and probably need to hold some loops a little bit more because this is a very long polygon here. Let's go ahead and exaggerate this a little bit more. So let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center. And thicken this out just a bit. on back face masking for our brush for auto masking here or you can just have a here button in your interface oops let's do mask by polygroups This one, in fact, um, now that I see this, I actually go ahead and stop this curve right here. Executive decision. So we're going to say here, you mesh through, get rid of this, complete hidden, crease. There we go. So I have a little bit more room for that chain to kind of come through.
we can still do this. So Shift D, insert, or we can just Q mesh this out, single poly here and here. wanted to we can actually poke a hole through here that'll be an easier one so insert single edge loop um hold down shift so we get a straighter line and i think what we can do is just quick split point you mesh polygroup island back dynamic let's go this one Okay, so now we need to do our chain through here. So uh, we can use dynamics for this. That might work, right? So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do insert. I'm going to over crank it, but I'm going to mask the ends. But you know, we can always get that geometry back. So let's go ahead and append again anything. Take this. Cube W place here sort of C. Uh, and this will be the start of our chain. So we're going to use this to put a chain across. And we're going to use dynamics for this. So we're going to give it a little bit of leeway because basically we're going to go from uh, this thing to this thing. Here here and then have this thing kind of just drape in the middle. So let's do this. Let's do um, take this top one here, delete hidden, auto groups, top one, delete hidden, insert here, single edge loop here and here. This will be our path and then insert multiple edge loops. Don't need any interactive elevation. Uh, and you can actually make a chain in um, dynamics. We can go dynamic, turn on a little dynamic thickness here, turn off smooth subdivision. Um, and like you can go through here and you can make a chain if you wanted to. We'll just put one of these in here and say uh, rotate. The, oh yeah, dynamic thickness. Ugh. Okay, well, this is fine. So just for as a, as a preview here, we can go through here and I'm just gonna mask this end and mask this end. And then we'll go dynamics properties. We have gravity turned on. Um, I don't know, eh, I guess we could. Uh, we'll have this and we'll go ahead and you know, let's take uh, Let's go ahead and calculate our collision volume. Gravity, strength, done. That'll kind of give us that path from here to here. That'll work fine. Do Shift D, and you're going to see really all it is is just taking that geometry here, and then just simulating it. And let's go ahead and um, take that inflate down to zero. But as we run this again, it's also it's that gravity crank, so it kind of gives that algorithm a little bit more time to think. firmness down. And every time we run the simulation, it's going to reevaluate those relationships so I can get a little bit more pull on it. I think that'll work fine. You know, so that'll give us you know, where our chain needs to go from and where it needs to go to. Right. Um, and now, do we have... I think, do I want... Oh, wow, there's some really cool chains in here. Hmm. These are like woven chains. I might need to go look and see if I can find a chain. Um, uh, best way to showcase details to stitches on characters' clothing is just by using several texture sheets or different pieces of detail texture setups. Um, in the texture, handling materials. Uh, unless you need to do it in 3D, and then I would use surface noise and apply it. But I would, if you're going to print it in 3D and you're going to scale it down, I would really over crank the side. 
um, depth or intensity of clothing stuff. Uh, um, Uh, you donate a couple bucks. Uh, you know what? I have a Patreon, but I don't have it really set up. Uh, I have a Gumroad Cube Brush Art Station Marketplace, um, but nothing really set up on YouTube. But hey, no worries. This is this is just part of the, you know, I uh, kind of stay awake. <laughs> I'm going off of caffeine. I have coffee right here, and I'm trying to. Oh boy, I had a rough weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm still kind of coming out of the fuzzy, uh, weaning myself off cat. But we're getting there. Huge number of videos, you too many subjects you haven't covered that you want to. Um, I, I, you know what? My my biggest want is to actually do more 3D work. Uh, the only time I actually do 3D work is once a month. On this channel, I don't really do a lot of 3D work, or you know, people think, um, you know, I use ZBrush a lot or something like that. I I don't use brush hardly ever. I use ZBrush once a month on my live streams. That's the extent of me using ZBrush. Um, gosh. I'm, I'm, what I'm really not great at is repeating chain link that is weird. I mean, I can do a basic chain link like this is easy, uh, but doing something like this, I think I'd have to think too hard. Hmm. So what I think I'm going to do is just stick with a regular chain link. So there are regular chain links in here. I don't know that they're going to work for what we need. They're, they're kind of um, not super usable. We go in here to IMM curve. You see there's a chain with a base, but this chain and these bases are way too off. But really quickly, let's just make a in here. Let's do a quick save so it saves everything going on in our scene. And uh, like I said before, um, take. Start with a cylinder torus. I guess we'll start with torus. Sorry, ring. Let's initialize this and make it a little bit easier. Down to eight. Twelve. Okay. Make polymesh 3D here. Hold down control alt w control drag up this can be our chain link start um although heck even these ones ah, you know it might even be better let me think let's start with a cylinder here and again, we'll make this super low fi Get the start of our chain here. And let's go over here. So we have X symmetry. We'll do a quick mirror and weld. Do a quick uh, group by normals with this X angle set up just a little bit. And then another mirror and weld. Work local symmetry across an X axis and say Q mesh, poly group island or all. And shift have scale that along that axis here. So um, now I have a little bit more control. So I'll go through here, I can say delete all rid of those, those, and then we can say bridge uh, two holes, and we can say uh, keep our corners a little rounder. So let's take this in. I'm trying to have a little bit more control for the overall shape of this chain. It's not perfectly rounded, it's a little bit more square like that. Compacty. Looking at here. So out of X symmetry, got on mesh mesh. Right, that should work okay. Uh, okay, so we'll hit control W and this will be the start of our chain link. And then uh, let's go ahead and just unify. We'll drag this up here and then control drag down another one. Rotate this one 90 degrees. Now the problem I believe with this one 
this down. We'll do an auto groups, W, control, tap, two. Um, I think what the problem with these is going to be is they're not going to repeat. So if I go up here, I'm like, hey, I'm going to drag this shape out, and I go up here, it's going to go boonk. Uh, so in reality, I don't even need this top link. Control shift A, control shift, drag, so delete hidden. So now on this one, if I drag it out, I'll go ahead and link up, but it's not going to be a tripart brush, which I don't think will be a huge deal. I don't think. Let's give it a shot. So let's say um, B, create insert mesh two, and underneath brush here make sure that under modifiers i go ahead and turn tri parts off but of course we have to say for a curve brush under stroke curve mode um back over here we only have two poly groups so i don't think it'll treat it as a tripart brush we'll just go ahead and we don't need a weld points or anything like that so this should give us Thing, and then we're gonna have to change our do 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 modifiers. Nope, that's gonna be in the stroke menu. So many menus I have to go look at. Uh, curve step, let's say 0. 0.75. Okay, that should work just fine. Um, so we don't have to do this ever again. Go ahead and make this draw size really big so we can see it. Tap off, up here to brush. Hold down Alt, they select icon, save as. I'm gonna throw this in my ZBrush 2021 brushes folder, and we'll just throw this right in here into the insert IMM. Or do we have? Yeah, we have our own IMM brush thing here. Say chain. And I wonder if we could use that. You know what? Since we've already done the hard work, try it. Control shift be hidden. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's not try it. We have better things to do. So let's go through here now. If I want a chain to go across here, all I need to do is uh, you can just do a quick mirror and weld. Say poly group, poly group, poly loop. Give a poly group side and poly group side. Broke. For functions, frame our poly group border here. Brush, simple chain, a simple chain right along here. Right scale, over crank it a little bit so it doesn't get turned into j. And let's also change that depth a little bit. Brush, depth, zero, now to go. Here, uh, and if you can't, Tap away from your object. Um, in this case, we can, but just in case, you can go in here to stroke the uh, curve functions delete. And then now we can go in here to hide point, which will get rid of, or at least hide the unmasked points and then control shift drag. I can delete hidden, or if I want to keep that curve around for later, I can, but we'll just go ahead and say geometry modify topology, <gasps> delete hidden. Now, uh, if I go through here and I do an auto group, so I can, I can kind of go through here and hit. Um, Eh, I can hit W and control, control tap and kind of move these uh, individually as needed. Um, but I can also go through here, even if they're all one poly group here. Control shift, control shift A. I can move these. Pass this through. Or um, some of these, it looks like once it gets to this point, just a, a round of a wire thing, but you know what, like I said, I don't, the focal point is going to be the chain on this thing, so let's go ahead and pick and choose our battles here a little bit uh, for now. So now, uh, getting this to work, um, go ahead and let's round off the shape a little bit more. And let's go ahead and crank up our bit more. 
right, we got our spout. That's somewhat working. And we got the shape here. So this is where it gets this is where it gets interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, group by normals here because we're gonna try and z remesh this, and we'll see how well that handles it. It's not overly complex, but uh, it's also not super simple either. So and also we need to that with a boolean now and hope z remesh can handle it, or do we do it later? So uh, we have this and we have our polygroups where we want them. We have this and let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And actually we need to merge these down and clean it up. So I'm gonna take this one, hold down shift, shoot to the bottom. Have this one, shoot to the bottom. And then when I merge these down, it's gonna inherit the Dynamesh property. So now I can go through here and just control drag and it's all Dynamesh. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here with trim curve. See if I can't get a nice clean cut along the top because that's gonna dictate you can always move these polygons back out once the zipper mesher does its thing. What I'm really looking for is just a nice clean polygroup for that top. Um, mm, I think, let me think. Rim. Okay, yeah, we could do that. Movie show off. Let's back that off because we can do, I think. Line on. Get a little bit better. So I'm going to go through here. Get a straight cut across. Old. Thing, technique. So we go through here and we have this polygroup and then this polygroup here. And I think this will be fine. So let's go through here, hit, or turned on. Right across. W, a control tap, this. On control this and then hold down control shift control shift X to expand control. W go ahead and grab that while you're here now if I do a mirror mirror and weld I go ahead and cut straight across. We have our two poly groups. It's a nice clean cut. And then ZeroMesher should be able to handle that as well as this one here. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's say dynamic thickness down, crease, uh, crease level all the way up, but smooth subdiv. Go ahead and smooth this out. Yeah, doesn't look like it. complete alt. That's our resulting shape. This is a resulting shape, and we're going to merge these down, and we're going to see. Uh, zero measure can't handle this. So let's go ahead and shoot this to the bottom. Hold down shift, turn everything off but these two shapes, and we're going to go down here to Boolean dynamic subdivision. Make mesh. Here's our U mesh. Now let's see. We've got nice clean groups here. We have X symmetry turned on. Let's see if we go in here and say uh, depth slice down to, eh, maybe down. Target plugin kind of five is fine. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Mesher can't do some of the lifting for us. It's going to get a little bit weird up here, but we'll see. Um, yes, there is a e coming up. 
Good morning. Uh, Unreal Engine ZBrush workflow. Yes, that, uh, yeah, that's another thing too. There's a there's a few things. Ugh, that didn't work. Um, using your work as much things as I can think of. Yes. Cool. Um, scan textures for N3D scan store for game character skin versus Substance Painter. Um, eh, whatever works better. Uh, like I said, um, extra XYZ, these can for Substance Painter. You can use a mole or, um, you know, it's, it's all just a little bit of problem solving. Uh oh, let me see. Testing, testing. Hmm, that one seems okay here. Of course, I didn't test it. There was one time when I did a. Oh, you know what we could do? Go ahead and just get rid of this top poly group because I can always just close that hole. So I don't need that to confuse it. Say so delete hidden. Now let's see if we can see mesh. And I may need to crank the zero mesh um, up as well. Oh, you know what? A little error. Guess not. Zero mesh. Sorry, I think it actually did a pretty decent job there. And I interrupted it. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, you know, we also don't need this bottom either. Keep simplifying. Don't give it too many things to think about. Really hard time. Those things. I wonder if um let's just do this one. Let's say split hidden. Let's say zero mesh. Not terrible. Half. Save. I need to crank that setting up. Okay, so that did fine. That's a decent zero mesh, and let's see here. Zero mesh. Boy, that, that, that front corner is really throwing it off for some reason. Um, that's close. I wonder if I could just go through and hand massage that out. Or you know what? Since that's just a, a regular extrude thickness, I can probably just do this. Let's say delete hidden. Pretty much this. I also maybe a different mid algorithm here. Oof, even worse. Yeah, it's that front point. That's um. Hmm. 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 Okay. Well, here's the thing. Here's what we could also do. We could also just keep those separate. Always cap this. Um, now I'm wondering. Hold these, delete hidden. Sorry, just doing um, experimentation live. Cool. Let's say half. See how well this does because again ideally i don't have to do any fancy footwork on the sides here uh kind of starts breaking down past a certain point let's help it out though and our floor off over here and say okay obviously getting hung up on something over here so we're going to go through and we're going to say collapse this edge here and let's help it out a little bit more so we're going to go through here and say split here here, bridge, and 
So it's trying to read much into these shapes here. Not good. Oh, okay. Throw over a face, say, do nothing. Yeesh. Okay. And then move this out. There we go. And collapse. I wish I could collapse that edge. Collapse this edge? Yeah. And then delete this one. Now fight me. Do that. So now maybe, let's look if there's any other problematic areas. I should have that closed as well, but we'll give this a shot. Heck, even this I could go through and just. Oops. This is great. I could also just extend in and then close the holes. Think, think, think. Hmm. How can I resolve this? Okay, let's not do half. Um, what's our aim? <laughs> if we can't get. Be hung up on just this area here. Build in something I don't need. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. I think there's something. I think there's an overlapping play in here. So let's go through here and weld. Um, weld points. Probably what it was. Yeah. Overlapping points that were giving it problems. Okay. So let's say half. Again, I'm just trying to try to go as low as possible without it breaking. Looks like here is where it's at, which is totally fine. Go through here and we'll just cap this off. Close, convex hole. So. Let's go ahead and say crease PG, crease level of two, smooth so div of three, or crease level of one even. Pin that back on. This kind of cobbled together piece we don't really need anymore, so we'll go ahead and delete that out of our scene. Uh, this we'll go ahead and keep. Decrease level of two, so div of three, be fine. That'll work for now. Um, the spout we could just extrude inwards that might be a little bit tricky we could do booleans too but then like zero mesh is already kind of iffy on that shape so we'll leave it for now so now let's go ahead and append well how do you want to do this we want to keep this here and work at the scale or you know what we're going to just unify this it's fine um so we, do we want to take that guy and put him into this scene or we want to take this and put it into the guy scene uh, we can do either one, but let's go through here. Let's say, um, let's hit W, control shift, oops. Control shift, drag all these, and let's say. A what? Older version of my own? Yeah. <laughs> uh, new folder, geez. So then we're going to go in here to Z plugin. Of tool master, we're going to copy this folder. Oops. Going to um, How do I uncopy it? Shoot. Bug. Paste that folder. Back in here, say 
copy folder for a guy here. Um, oh boy, he still has a bunch of stuff in here, doesn't he? Yeah, he has this whole outfit. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go down here and say delete other. Then we're going to say paste folder. Then we can take this lamp here. Lamp copied correctly, which... Which it didn't do. Hmm. Not great. Let's do this. Eat all. Easy thing to do would say. Copy folder should work, but it's doing something really weird with my scale. And also, so I don't really like that gremlin. It kind of concerns me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say merge visible. Eat all. Now we have all of this stuff uh, merged into one subtool. We lost our dynamic uh, properties, but let's go. We can get those back real quick. Um, go ahead and say append amp here. It's also weird too because I hit unify on that guy. Oh, you know what? Maybe because I was using two different, that's what it was. So down here under scale master, we need to go look at the scale master video we talked about earlier. Um, if you go in here to the export settings, yeah. I started this with Z primitives, uh, so my export settings were different. So that's why it treated them as different scales. Anyway, uh, we can just drop this down in our scene and I'll scale it. Yeah, that should work fine. So now uh, we can go through and split this apart. I think really what we'll need is all of these can probably share the same dynamic properties, I think. Control shift A, split hidden. Double of two, smooth set of three. Yeah, good enough. Drop this lid down just a bit. Control shift, control shift A. Mask, invert, ooch. All right. Yeah, I think that'll work. Um, cool. Cool. All right. So, what else we want to do? We want to go ahead and well, what time is it? So okay, we got thirty minutes. So I've got some really got a, a bunch of reference up here, but here's some really interesting. Here's uh, one causing causing toothache. Really cool ones in here. Um. Body reference. Here. We're thinking about what we want to do. So I guess the easiest way uh, we can go ahead and say just append here, and like we did before, take this uh, B H for snake hook. Turn on row. Hmm. Why would it be giving me problems here? I mean, we don't have to use Sculpture Pro, but um, nice to use Snake Hook Auto Mask. Oh, Mask by Polygroups is on. That's why. Okay, so I forgot that was global. So now we can go through here, and we can do a um. You can also use these spheres for this, I suppose. Nice control. Or 
Spells probably got a little bit chunky. That's okay. We can go through here. And we can force these together. Uh, Sculptor Pro won't work, but Dynamesh will. And then we'll go through here and inflate this up. And then we're back to Sculptor's Pro. So be H, Snake Hook Brush. Sculptor's Pro turned on. Kind of want the smoke to be an extension of his lower body, kind of like a mermaid for a minute. And then we'll have that kind of go. Back out around. Let's go ahead and turn off Sculptors Pro. I don't think it anymore. Like I said, if you wanted a nice uh, smooth transition, I mean, you could always zero mesh this too. If you wanted to really control the geometry for this, but I don't think it'll be super necessary. And this might be end up being in like a, more of an effect, where like if even if we took them, they took this in the key shot real quick. You know, maybe uh, overlap this geometry, have a simple geometry, then have a uh, texture, kind of an opacity texture, the sign, and you could uh, inflate it a little bit and have some glowy things around it, but. Kind of inflate. All righty. Um, clothing, clothing, kind of clothing. Some hard surface stuff. There's also some base too. And also some eyeballs we should probably put on this guy. Huh? We can have him glow. So drop some eyeballs in here. Of course, it's going to tell me, hey, it's multiple subdivision levels. One thing we need to do, go ahead and grab our trusty Polymesh 3D here and sync this right into the middle of his body here. And we're going to use this as our name catcher. Go through here, go ahead and save here. Go ahead and inherit that name, and I can use this as a quick and easy way to go through and drop these. So X symmetry turned on. Eyeballs in here, say split mass points. W, we'll go in here to local symmetry. And let's use a little something to block that transition a little bit. We can use kind of a cloth or a big belt. Um, I'll see if I can my eye. Uh, what we can do is I can do a quick, all X, right, yeah, that'll work. Go ahead and do a quick, uh, um, and let's duplicate this guy off. Duplicate him off, solo mode. And let's start thinking about what I want here we'll keep it low maybe we'll do a we'll start with hard surfacey and go from there again we can just stay concept sketchy for now and then if we feel like we need to rebuild we can certainly do that so I'm gonna go ahead and take on control and mask lasso 
one apart off here, and we'll say Control W, isolate, be hidden, be lower, close holes, be hidden, close holes here, X symmetry, and then inflate this out, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right, so down here we'll kind of make this follow along waste here a little bit higher resolution kind of mesh All right, let's go to the front. Something vaguely built shapey. You want to put some dynamic cloth, like maybe up at the bottom here or right around the top. Um, one thing I'm seeing, a common theme I'm seeing, is like gauntlets and stuff like that too. So go ahead and. Let's go ahead and do the kind of the same thing we just did. I don't. If we're doing simple gauntlets, uh, it might be something as simple as uh, duplicating this off. Hold down Control Shift, going to slice, and let's say delete lower, delete higher, on the solo mode. So I can literally just go through here and slice where I might want those to be. Isolate that, delete hidden, as uh, your measure types zero half. Go ahead and get tape. Oops. A system turned off. Well, this will give us the overall shape we're looking for. Simplified shape. Gauntlets here. Through here again, if it's just a simple uh something simple. This and add uh front and back ridges. It might be. Try this. Uh, okay. Say insert on the ledge loop here and poly group poly loop. Same thing down here. In fact, we may need to back this up off a little bit. Q mesh poly group. Shift and poly group island. I'm going to push that back a little bit. Now we'll say poly group here. Uh, in fact, let's do. Control Shift, Control W, a little bit. So now I can go through here and say, um, oh, we can say maybe slide. Dynamic crease two, specific three. Close edge loop complete. Details and shapes on there. Want to see in the same thing. I guess we could use. Yeah, let's do the same thing we just did. That works fine. So again, solo here. And if we want, we can hold down Control Shift, isolate this. Be hidden. Shift, turn on symmetry because we just on the side if we want. 
a slice curve on here. If I want to make this even more regular and say insert single edge loop, just get rid of these middle ones here. Um, and his cross profile of his arm isn't just a perfect cylinder. Up. Um, although it is biceps a little bit out there. Anyway, uh, let's go through here. I'll say Q mesh probably all. If we want to, we can fudge it a little bit too. We can go through here and do a um, polish by features and around this out. Not that so much built in that cross section there. And we can go through here. Let's say that surface normal. We can make this broader. You can kind of both. What you look at here. Let's try this. Let's go through here. You mesh poly group, I'll hold down shift and just hold that in just a little bit. And another insert here, here. Even go through here and say insert multiple edge loops. Now bulge this out if we do interactive resolution elevation. And then the same thing here. Although this stuff, I might want these to be different materials. You know, so like through here, instead of having all this stuff built in, what I would probably do is want to have these top and bottom pieces of geometry separate. So in that case, easiest way to go about this. Can duplicate this off and say poly your poly loop here. Let's see if we can do a Q mesh. Oh, you know what we need to Insert here. Why? Or, you know, we could do. Delete hidden. Um, so if I just want these middle ones here, we can just delete hidden out of here. Let's do that. Q mesh, all polygons will get that thickness back. Flip our normals. And here, uh, again, if we just need these polygroups here, we'll just say delete hidden. Again, do mesh. Flip. So that way I can have these as separate pieces of geometry if I wanted to fill these with gold or something like that. And we can just go through here and just run a uh, crease BG, crease with the three. And then same thing for this one. A little bit more leeway. Um, and then for these, what we can do is um, put in here to a ray mesh, ray mesh, lock position, lock size, reset X mirror, and you'll have this over here. I mean, I have this on a row. So that way, if I ever want to get rid of these or turn them off temporarily, I can just turn off a ray mesh. Turn them off, and then I can just work on one side, like so. Um, it's also kind of a, let's see if this will work. Go to the top here, append, sorry. A, plain 3D. Rotate this. Negative 90. I'm going to drop something right on him. We're going to hold down control shift. We're going to go in here and we're going to do slice circle. And this is going to need to fit around his head. This to his shoulders here. Like 
like that. Also, we don't really need to see the lamp stuff here. All right, so over here underneath dynamic. Recalculate our collision volume here. Gravity strength should be fine. A little high. There we go. And let's also turn that firmness up a bit. That'll work. Now, let's go ahead and give this a little bit of dynamic thickness here. Do post sub div, so we're going to smooth it out a little bit. Smooth sub div of two might be fine. All right, I think that'll work. And then he's got a bunch of chains on him. So, how we want to do these chains? We've already made our chain brush, luckily. So, I think that'll work. Brush chain and we'll go to our trusty hidden um, star there and we'll go kind of chains out let's make these really big boat chains big dude go ahead and off say split points and also um, some of these two the overall theme here seems like chain mm hmm Italian list maybe it's gonna start to look like Thanos um, let's go over here and let's get this creature down to one fact transpose that's a new 2021 feature by the way is the transpose app off some people don't really don't like that but in handy in situations like this I tap off and then go back into transpose in here you know what? Let's just knock these back just a bit. Let's like do mesh. Follow your ball. Hold down shift along that surface. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. When using my blend chase plugin, is it possible to edit the mesh without having the layers in board mode? If it'll let you. <laughs> Only one way to find out. Try it. Um, or is it possible because it's not letting you? Is there a way around it? Yeah, there's always tricky little hacky ways around it where you could just not be in record mode and then go do whatever you want and then go back in record mode and project history or something like that back. But uh, so I learned, uh, thanks. No problem. My pleasure. Glad the videos are helping out. A new CPU was wondering what the max number of polys you'll typically have for a subtool. Anything above 15 million seems very sluggish. I rarely have more than 4 million per subtool. Help it. With some basic things, well done. Uh, I mean, how I struggled. I still struggle, <laughs> depending on what I'm trying to make. Um, life's a struggle, but it gets easier. Yeah, ZBrush will handle hundreds of millions of polygons. If you use an HD geometry, it'll handle billions of polygons. Um, but per subtool, I try not to have more than 4 million. Instead of having like, because I could have this all in one subtool and have it 20 million polygons right now. Um, but it just, it's hard to work with. 
like even even from not even from a technical standpoint like can the hardware or software handle it but even from like a, a usability like if i want to go through here and just work on the body it's going to solo mode you know um, now if you do have a body that has to be like super high res detailed with uh, or or you know you need udims across a creature that has 75 udims and you need to sculpt in all the detail and each each udim has to be 100 million polygons um yeah that's uh i don't do that though <laughs> if i can help it uh that's not really my workflow it, it can be done um at the zbrush summits those those lots of people there do the kind of workflows and that works but, um I don't, I don't do the 100 million polygon sculpts. I just don't. Cool. Uh, yeah, this one here is a... Um, Ryzen Thunderbird 3970X, 32 core processor. And, and the ecosystem on the, the Ryzen's are pretty good right now. You get the... Um, the PCIe 4.0 and for your M.2 drives and stuff like that. So it's speedy, a little more future proof ish. I mean, not that that really is ever a thing, but flex on. That's why I'm going to thicken this out a little bit. Q mesh poly group ball. D. Oh, right. We have <laughs> dynamic thickness, is why. I'm like, why can't I make these interiors? No, dynamic it doesn't exist. But we'll change our thickness that way. Um, you can always keep rerunning re your simulation if you want it to kind of stick a little bit closer, but it work. Uh, anyway, we got this. We got some chains. Um, do I want to give them a big old sword? Do I want to give them some facial hair? Let's try this. Let's go in here. I'm just going to insert a sphere. Do a little bit of look dev here. Ooh, there we go. Serial look. We have X symmetry turned on. Let's go and split mass points. Oh, we didn't have to do that. X symmetry turned on. Go in here and move around. And uh, we can turn on sculptors pro for this too. Um, can use ooh, brush with it. We can use snake cook. Up just a little bit more. Um, for a mustache, maybe I'll go through here and I'll do. I just have some. <laughs> we could go through here. Let's go ahead and say split mass points. Let's turn off X symmetry and get rid of that side here. And again, if you wanted to, you can do the whole array mesh thing. Uh, let's hit W. Let's go in here to our bend curve and drop this down the axis. And then raise resolution. Um, so if you needed a very precise curve placement, you can go through here and do that. Of course, you can just go through and sculpt this out. And the other cool thing about this too, start twisting or scaling these things up or down. Through here, you get a little bit more control. Probably one of my more favorite things to use here. And actually, we may need more resolution. This is probably going to snap it back. Oh, you know what? It did a great job. And this one still has uh, ray mesh turned on, so I go turn that on. That way I don't have to like delete hidden and then go back and forth. Uh, it'll work on both sides. And I can use a bend curve across. Um, uh, X symmetry here.
I might actually have too much resolution. Love that it doesn't snap back anymore. I uh, used to be when you had to change the resolution, it would snap back to the original mesh. Excellent. Of course, you know, you can just go out of that mode and just go into move mode and just take this out. Let's go in here, do an inflate. We have polished by features. Zero mesh this doesn't even have to be any more crazy than that. And do an inflate across here. Uh, big hat or ponytail? Uh, ponytail. So right along the back here, we have X. Oh, we don't have X on the so let's go back up to this one here. I just want to put one right down the middle. So let's say split mass points here. And kind of the same thing we did already through here you know let's do this let's do insert multiple edge loops down the middle a bevel a q mesh and then let's say crease and then uh you know what we've been having some good luck with our Cylinder here, so let's do a cylinder uh, down this way. If you pull out and then pull in, that'll give you a cylinder, and it'll, it'll kind of rotate that on that or uh, spin it out in that direction. Let's go ahead and say split mass points, position us again, and then one more time. Uh, well, we need some resolution first. Let's say insert multiple edge loops, and in fact, we can do interactive elevation on this one if we want to kind of thicken out that middle, uh, but we can also do that later. I do specified elevation and I give it some geometry. Let me make it all in polygroup here and we'll just say end curve one more time down the axis and uh, maybe a little bit, eh, that might be okay. And we'll go ahead and bend in this around. And up here, it'll probably be thicker as it goes down we'll scale we could even use this for hair strands if we wanted to and up that resolution just a bit You can see it's already starting to kind of twist, which is cool. A nice little helix. Uses control curves. Wanted to, in fact. We wanted to, let's see, this is going to come out kind of straight and then it's going to kind of helix around. Uh, that might actually be okay. Well, let's go through here and massage this. Let's do a quick. Um, polished by feet here. This is going to be our base of our hair. And then if we want any flyaways, we want any extra hairs off of this, we can say duplicate this off. Solo mode. Let's do a quick group by normals. Drop that angle down a bit. Ew, that's not going to work, is it? That's okay. We'll shift, lasso, invert, delete hidden. Oh, we're over time. And dang, it's just getting fun. Uh, let's go through here and say polygroup, polyloop here, here. Be hidden. Uh, 
one here to our move brush. Or yeah, move brush. And then uh, topological. So now we can go through here and individually these pieces. And you could, these, these don't have to go all the way down. They can, they can terminate early. Um, hopefully, way to do that. Hmm. So we could do this. W control drag down a strand and then just say hide point. And just say delete hidden, close holes. hidden close holes. And again, you can use these curves for uh, more flyaways or through here and a helix these around, all sorts of good stuff you can do. But we'll keep it simple for now. Let's also do, just do a quick launch by features, just kind of relax those a bit. And then as they get to the end, let's hold down shift. We'll turn on topological for our shift brush too. Kind of thin these out as they go down. Also go up here. Oops, sorry. Put into my mic there. But inflate these up. Now again, this is a very simple geometry. It's not a lot of geo there so if you need to convert this to actual geometry uh, you can do that in fact this one we might so we can go here or, um, here on ghost so we can kind of sculpt through Naming standard for this, getting I want a little bit more of a broad fall off my orbs cracks. You can use slash brushes for that as well. Dynamic plate, plate polish. All right, let's do the same thing here. Take, wear it out. Barber. I want to be careful. Thin meshes, turn on back face masking so you don't grab through.
fine for now. Weird beard. Holding down Alt to pull up and uh, move act kind of pull out the corners. And you know what? Now that I have is that on for back your brush. This is H polish, trim dynamic. And uh, yeah, generally speaking, it would just be kind of in this direction. Hidden. Yeah, so we got cloth here, we got necklaces, we got chains. Oh, there's a lot of cool things we can do with this, but this will work for now. Let's go and turn everything back on. You got kind of a genie going from perspective. Not posed or anything. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> like uh, with a ray mesh, it works a little weird. Crazy. And we can check it. Go down here to the properties, BPR settings, transparent shading is off. And it's also weird too because this is the array mesh site that actually exists. So if I turn this off, huh? That's a little bit of a bug. It looks like anyway, something like that. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, earrings and piercings. Oh, let's do that real quick. Yeah, real quick here. Uh, let's go through here. Points here. Good point. Also going to go through here, and we'll set. turn on L sim if you want to scale across that local axis there. Then so that's in place ish. Here with inflate. It's going to inflate the bottom right here. E for dynamic, I'll turn off dynamesh. Yeah, there's a lot of ornate things we could put on here, which would be really fun. Um, agreed. Cool, uh, just getting caught up here. Presley hidden then uh, hidden geo is getting back. How come? I I, I probably because I keep hitting undo. <laughs> I'm really happy with my undo button. I, I do that a little bit too much probably. Uh, export an OBJ that uses micro poly to so it doesn't have too many polygons. You have to bake it. Uh, if you're too many polygons, is just what's going to happen when you use micro poly. Like if I put a chain mail on here and I'm like, okay, let's do a micro poly on this here. Um, dynamic micro poly on, and we want to put on I don't know, denim or something like that. And you know what? Even let's do like a smooth subdiv. Oops. Okay, perfect. This is awesome, right? Well, right now it's only 416 active points. As soon as I hit apply, now it's 
461,000 points. And if you're thinking you're going to go into Substance Painter and have it UV 460,000 points, and also what exactly is it UVing? It's UVing every single piece of geometry in this mesh, um, which any program is probably going to choke on. And even if it didn't, is it going to give you great results? No. So what you would need to do, and this is why if I'm going to do this in the texture later, um, I would just do it in the texture. I would use a tiling texture, I would use a micro poly. Or if you're going to use micro poly, you would bake this result to a low poly mesh, which would be something like this. You would just bake it down to simple geo. So you get the detail without this. Now, if you're going to 3D print it, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you're going to have to have that geometry there. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick polish by feet. Um, But yeah, um, there's only so much you can do when you have half a million polygons. Uh, is it better to scale? Yeah, I, should, I definitely need to pose it. I mean, I, I can really quickly go into Transpose Master. It would probably work okay if I want to do a quick, uh, let's go ahead and save them. Just real quick. One here to plug in master. Go ahead and depose our mesh here. It is <laughs> yeah, mostly done. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just hold down control and uh, blur that mask out of the invert that. And click. Hands are a little bit. He's generally in that body builder pose, but his hands, I think. What's he doing here? Doesn't know what to do with his hands. Interesting, but this hand will just have him doing something slightly different. So this hand, go ahead and just spread these fingers out a little bit, maybe. On this side, punches. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows what we're doing? Yeah, it's like plate. Easier to work with here. Work our way down. This isn't the funnest thing in the world to do, and for sure, if it's like, well, if I had a rig, uh, sure, if you had a rig to do this, um, and you could you could use a, a Z sphere rig. Uh, I don't know if it helped us that much in this case, but. Uh, there's there's videos on my YouTube if you want to do the Z-Sphere route and see if that gets you anywhere. Basically what we're going to do is just show you, you now it's fairly easy kind of go through and do a quick pose even if you want to take like these things here and just adjust them as needed in you know with everything else in fact we could go in here with move brush and say move topological brush that here 
Uh, there's a topological brush too. I just tend to go in here, grab it as needed. I don't I'll keep a topological brush that comes with ZBrush, but essentially all that brush is is topolog topo topological settings uh, in there. And you know what? Let's go ahead even and say, let's use this control shift. Let's grab his whole upper body here. Anyway, so we're good with this. Go back to our the plugin, transpose master, and we'll say uh, transpose back to transpose sub. Go through and update. Cool. Uh, of course, this is an array mesh, so what we're gonna have to do is the uh, let's turn the array mesh off, and I'm going to actually just. I forgot about that. Yeah, array mesh isn't gonna work great for things that need to be posed. So keep that in mind. In turn. By the way. And in this case, we can just uh, duplicate this across the X. Save yourself a little bit of work. Convert your array mesh to real mesh um, before you go through and pose. some headache. A little rock brow. Something like that. Uh, good news is our BPR render should work now that we don't have a ray mesh anymore. Go ahead and save this as posed. There we go. Um, better to scale up an object with the same resolution or res. Um, probably increase the resolution. I see that sounds easier. Uh, yeah, my custom menus you can find on my Gumroad under Intro to ZBrush Files. That for free. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna paint it live. I mean, it should be really simple if we wanted to do like um, go through here and say MRGB. Okay, grab a skin shader four. Start off with a. Back to go back to RGB, and go through here. See if there's. Um, I'll probably paint for all these so they don't wear it.
RGB intensity down. Um, and obviously I would, probably would have only painted before I got too heavy into or in, in opposing here. Uh, ooh, but there's also some really cool what resolution we got. Yes, go up in resolution just a little bit. Some really cool uh, tattoo type things we could do. Wow. So many things. Put in a little bit of blood pooling. It's going to turn him a little bit purpley, but that's okay. Turn off X symmetry because it's not symmetrical anymore. Think if there's another. Because I would love to do. We could do a missive, and we could traction, like using stuff. You know what? Let's um let's live stream later this month. Let's live stream, and uh, we'll we'll maybe finish this guy out a little bit more before I get to do it. Um, are you going to print it? Your geometry's limits on a print that's true just um, resolution on your prints so if you're gonna I would like I said if you're gonna do a micro poly I would over crank it a little bit especially if you're going to scale uh, so it doesn't turn to mud and it actually up on your 3d print 3d pause by the whole models one piece or multiple for mobile games um probably is one for a mobile game it kind of also depends on how it's going to be rigged and how you're going to see it but the lower fidelity, the better for mobile jet. Uh, do you ever run into the problem of working for a company that hires inexperienced people? Maybe role. Um, I, I don't in an art director role. No. Find two normal maps together. I've got an asset. I plan to trim sheet, but I can only get part of the normal details through a high low bake. Trying to find my bake with a itself oh back in the day if you drop the in photoshop you drop the blue channel and you do overlay oh yeah probably the safest thing would be just to um cut out the normal map and then merge it down in photoshop there's some settings for that but boy it's been a long time cool Uh, single best tip, you've been sculpting, it feels like he's having trouble as he goes away from poly modeling. Uh, just keep practicing. You know, you're never, you're not going to be good the first time you do it or maybe the 10th time you do it. Um, but as long as you keep trying, eventually it'll just become second nature. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as for like the tattoos and stuff, you could definitely do, you know, just paint those on. And, uh, and um, but I kind of want to do it in 3D. It just gives me a little bit more control. But anyway. Thanks everybody. And uh we'll see you we'll see you later this month. We'll try to get on the live stream and we'll finish this guy out a little bit more. Oh. Cool.